He is the only Canadian to win two Bassmaster events. He is the only Canadian to ever win the Bassmaster Classic. He is the reigning and defending Bassmaster Classic champion all the way from Kenora, Ontario. The great Canadian snow leopard, Gussie. Jeff Gustafson joins me this week on... I'm Bob Cobb for the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Welcome one, welcome all friends, family, freeloaders, fishing freaks. You're all welcome here at the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Want to welcome in all our humpers that tune in week after week to a very special episode. Um, now, I know generally after events, we have Jake LaTondres, a Bassmaster cameraman extraordinaire on here to break it down, but we made a little bit of an edit this week. Jake will be on next week, and we will have a bunch of juicy details, behind-the-scenes details of the Bassmaster Classic um, that I think will actually be better next week, to be honest, because it is such a mind-melter when you go through the Classic. I mean, that's the reason my voice is a little raspy, got a little bit of a smoke o'clock shadow going on in my voice um recovering from the classic but it takes whether you're a camera guy i mean i don't even know how the anglers feel after it but it's just it's a lot and it takes a little while to kind of absorb it all and not miss something so uh, me and jake thought well we'll make a little bit of an edit and we'll do next week's show with jake and we've got a lot of juicy details. We're making notes and uh, checking them twice. And you'll be able to see that next week. But we made an edit for one reason. For the first time ever in history, a Canadian won the Bassmaster Classic, if you haven't heard. Jeff Gustafson, um, Bassmaster Classic champion. Um, unbelievable. Um, the Classic in general, before I even get into Gussie, uh, unbelievable. Record-setting cl Classic. Knoxville knocked it out of the park as always knoxville rocks i mean we were there in 19 and you look at the standard that was set in 19 and you're like it's going to be tough to live up to that well this one was bigger and better i think the official number 163,000 people were at the 2023 bassmaster classic in knoxville tennessee and you guys are awesome <clears throat> because i'll be i'll be honest um I was literally, and people say this, you know, oh, I was blown away. I mean, it was amazing to me. I honestly was blown away by how many people came up and saw me at the expo at takeoff at the arena or whatever and mentioned the podcast. Um, it, literally, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky. I get to do a lot of things. I mean, I host a TV show. I, I work for Bass, a podcast. But I bet you 90% of the people that came up to me was like, I'm a humper. I listen to the podcast every week and... Thank you. Thank you all. You have no idea how much it means to me. Um, it was inspiring, uh, encouraging, motivating, all of the good adjectives. Because literally, if I ever thought of taking my foot off the pedal, it was like everything you guys said to me was like tiny brick to my toe. And I'm like full steam ahead with the podcast. And um, I thank you for that. I, I honestly thank you all for that. It was an incredible week. And um Gussie got it done. I mean, there was a sea of Canadians there. It was uh, it was pretty incredible to see how many Canadians were there. Uh, I couldn't stop talking about the Aussies um, and the impact they made. And then, of course, people who traveled all from all around the world and all through the United States. It was um, the classic is a celebration of the sport, a celebration of the industry. Um, it was the debut of the Ray Scott Bassmaster Classic Trophy, which. It's so, so cool. Um, but it was a great time. So thank you to all of you that I got to meet um, and I got to spend a little time with. I, I literally, I'm going to do that a lot during this podcast. I literally um, leave every classic with regrets um, because I just feel like I never get to spend enough time with anyone. It's so busy. Like there's so many things going on. So if... You waved to me and you didn't, and I didn't see you, and I walked past or whatever. Please do not take offense to it. It literally was it, the classic is just such a mind melter for me, um, and I literally leave it feeling like oh, I I saw that guy and I saw this person and that person and 
I just never got to spend enough time with anyone. But um, thank you all for, for the incredible support. What an event. Uh, what an incredible party. Um, and what a champion. It, it's, it's unbelievable to see. I mean, Gussie is somebody who I've known for a long time. I mean, Gussie's first seminar ever was at the Winnipeg Boat Show. Um, and he was a little kid, nervous. I mean, I'm not a little kid. I think he was 16, 17 years old, something like that. Um, he didn't want to, he was like nervous to do a seminar. And I was like, come on, let's go do it together. And we did his first seminar was with me. And um, who to thunk at that time that that's a future Bassmaster Classic champion. Um, obviously, I didn't think that at the time, but I'm not shocked. I mean, he's an incredible angler, an incredible person. And that's what you're going to hear. I mean, he's going to be on every podcast in the world um, for the next year. And you're going to hear people say that over and over again. Gussie is that special person. He's that person that everybody feels like they have a special connection with him. And because they, they most likely do. Um, he's just, uh, he's you know, like I just said, I feel like I'm flying past everybody and not spending enough time. I feel like Gussie's the opposite. You know what I mean? He just knows how to spend time with people and just, I mean, I, I don't know. I just got to get better at that. But uh, Gussie's an incredible champion, um, made even more incredible by his unbelievable family. His mom, his dad, they were so cool to hang out with um, this week, bef even before he won. You know, the night before, I got to spend a bunch of time with them um, at the hotel. And uh, big buff Dustin Bufflin dropped everything on his holiday and uh, headed there in a short pair of shorts and a T-shirt from Florida um, because that's how special Gussie is. Um, Jamie Bruce, one of his buddies, and and his brother Ben, they, like they literally drove through the night to get there. It's just like there's so many of those stories. People just kept appearing, and they're just like, and and that was the cool thing about the Night of Champions, or not Night of Champions, but the Champions Toast the Bass puts on after, you know, it's all done on Sunday night. They put on this Champions Toast, and there was so many people there. It was the biggest lineup I've ever seen of of pros to get a picture with the with the new champ. It it was, you know, people were just showing up from everywhere because Gussie's that person, and uh, he made history. Um, if you ask me, you put him up there with Mike Weir winning the Masters. As far as a Canadian sports moment, it's one of the most incredible things um, that's ever happened, and I can't wait to see how it grows because at one time people thought a Canadian can't make it on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Well, now we have four, and now we have a – Bassmaster Classic champion. Literally the only two things left to be first for a Canadian. You know, obviously Chris Johnson, the first Elite Series champion. Gussie got one shortly after him. Gussie, the first Bassmaster Classic champion. Cooper Gallant might be the first Elite Series rookie of the year. We've never had a Canadian win that. And then, of course, Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. That's a title that's up for grabs that no Canadian has won yet. But if you look at the skew and how tournament fishing i can't wait to see how this victory inspires the future anglers you know what i mean like to see gussie get it done and he is that guy where people are like well you know he's just a down-to-earth dude if gussie can get it done i i it, and if he can overcome everything he's had to you know what i mean he lives further north than any of the other guys way further north like literally if i left my house in port perry ontario and headed north in one car, and then somebody else headed south in another car, the car would hit Florida before I would get to Kenora. That's how far Gussie lives. Um, and it, it's that shows you how big Ontario is as well. But an incredible angler, an incredible champion, and um, I really was lost for words. Like, when I walked up the stage, I didn't even know what I said. I didn't even know what I announced. Like, it was, it was just a... It was pretty special. Every champion special, but when you know I've known somebody for as long as I have, it just makes it it made it that more, much more special. And the emotional roller coaster of him only having two fish in the last day. I mean, literally, um, 
if his poor friends, you know what I mean? His family, they were just literally like when I saw them backstage, but I was walking out to go on stage and I saw a group of them and they were shooting stuff for this new show coming out by bass called the cast, which is the history of bass and everything. So it was cool. I had several camera guys following me to the stage, but I made a beeline. As soon as I realized who it was, I made a beeline over to them and just gave them a hug. Cause I'm like, you guys have to be shaking like a leaf right now. Um, because it was just that kind of day, but it was an incredible tournament, an incredible moment. Um, I thank everybody. Thank everybody that was there. All the Canadians that made an effort to be there. I was blown away by how many flags were in the crowd. Um, and initially I thought, you know, it was just a few near the front or whatever, but it, there, it was all around. Like there was so many Canadians there that, that I didn't even get a chance to see. So thank you all for being the awesome people you are. Thank everyone that came to that way and everyone that came to that celebration of the sport. Thank you. It was freaking incredible. I mean, um, compared to what you want, the Kentucky Derby, the Daytona 500, the Catalina wine mixer of bass fishing. That is what the Bassmaster Classic is. And how cool is it to see Jason Christie hand the trophy off to Jeff Gustafson? I mean, Christie and Gussie, they room together. They have roomed together the last year. Um, Shanna and Shelby, Shelby is Gussie's wife, and Shanna, who is um, Jason's fiance. They're really good friends, uh, such good friends that on the stage I screwed up and actually called um, Shelby Shanna for a second. But it, in my defense, I was backstage screaming stuff, and Shanna's there, and Jason's there, and and uh, I'm not very good at my job a lot of times. Um, but yeah, no, it was an incredible classic. So many incredible moments that I want to go over and I want to talk to you about. Um Swindle moment on day two during weigh-in that the fact that he took a moment like at the most valuable time that he has all year on stage and he chose to talk about me and give me a little kudos made me very embarrassed but man humbled and thankful and I that's the only reason I bring it up not to shine light on me and be like Swindle said nice things about me just to point out what it Good dude that guy is. Like, think about it. He literally could have talked about anything. And he talked about me on stage. Um, thank you. Um, anyways, it was an incredible event. We got an incredible champion. So incredible that he literally drove all night. I mean, he had a 22-hour drive or something to get back. Um, drove back with... Uh, Gussie Shelby and uh, Brian Gustafson and Bree and uh, their close friends, which are just awesome salt of the earth people. Uh, Brian actually invented the smeltinator jig head that um, most companies have knocked off by this point. Let's be honest, um, which they're going to be hard to get, get, get ordering them. They are pretty freaking incredible, um, but it's just good people. And that's, that's what Kenora Ontario is. Think about it. Like I said it on stage Gussie comes from a small town in Ontario called Kenora. And in that event, the KBI event, the big deal is get a ride through the, the tent. Well, Gussie just rode through the biggest tent in professional bass fishing, as in the um, Thompson Bowling Arena, um, which was incredible. But, but, you know, Kenora is just full of great people. I mean, it's a group of people that live somewhere where it's not easy to live. Um, it's not easy to travel from, but that's what makes those people special. They're people who have decided to, I don't need to live right beside a big city. I, I, I don't need to live where they don't get snow. I need to live where I'm closest to nature. And that's explains the people from Kenora. And, um, Gus, he's just one of those amazing, amazing people. Uh, and I'm so thankful to have him as a friend and as an industry. It's it's not just a Canada thing. I get it. You're going to hear a lot about Canada because he's the first and um, only right now. But no matter where Gus is from, he's just a special person, a special champion, a great champion. Um, and I just can't wait to watch the rest of the world 
finally open their eyes to realize just how special of a person Jeff Gustafson is. And, um, and he really is. And we're lucky to have him as our Bassmaster Classic champion. He drove all night um, and agreed to do this so that we could uh, get inside his head a little bit. So rather than continuing to blab along, let's travel all the way to Kenora, Ontario and hook up with the only Canadian to ever win the Bassmaster Classic, the great Canadian snow leopard, Gussie Jeff Gustafson. Gussie, I last saw you, we were walking through the streets of Knoxville. It was like a scene from a movie. It was pitch black. There was nobody on the streets. Well, 70 to 80 Aussies. <laughs> yeah, except for 30 Aussies doing the oi, oi, oi. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> if it we were really... in any other city, we probably would have been all arrested, but oh. uh, they did not care in Knoxville. They let us have a full, full breach, and uh, it was amazing. Yeah, it would honestly, it's one of my, I've told a bunch of people, it's one of my favorite classic memories, like watching, you had the, I mean, dude, I've been lucky enough to go to a few Stanley Cup parties, and I remember one of Bickle's Stanley Cup parties, and he had the cup over his shoulder, and he was walking through downtown Toronto, because we were at this club, and we we're going to another club, and there's just this, the whole party's following them down the street. And in Toronto, they're not used to seeing the cup. So people were freaking out, yeah. <laughs> but they, that it was just like that. You were rolling with the, with the trophy and all the people behind you. Like, I honestly wish you probably never saw it. And I, I regret not pulling my camera out and taking a video, but if somebody from behind, like it was just the coolest thing ever. And they're the Aussies are just, I mean, they're awesome. Like how amazing, awesome are they? Amazing people. It was a uh, like, like, yeah, like, I don't know how many there was probably not, it wasn't their whole group, but like at least 15 of them and, you know, 20 Canadians and 20 Americans. And we all were uh, just having a time. Um, so, yeah, it was a, it was it made the whole weekend like it was just a really good capper to the weekend for sure. Yeah, it was it was incredible. No damage to the trophy. Right. I mean, that it, no, there was some it, some close calls. Yeah, I my I don't know if you can see, but I got a good one right here. Um, my face and the 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 little bass on the trophy and the revolving door at the Marriott collided on my way back into the hotel. And <laughs> I know this we already told you about this, but Shelb's got a good picture. Like when by the time I got up to the room, I had like blood running down my nose. And then when I got to the room, I had to do the, you know one of these sits for a while and she couldn't get me to go into bed and she said the whole arm of my jersey was just covered in blood so there was one yeah one little bump but that's nothing major don't wash that jersey dude keep that jersey like honestly like because i'm I, I bet you down the road that'll be one of you you know what i mean like yeah. don't put it for yeah. charity for anything just keep that one in a case because I mean, 20 years from now, it'd be badass to tell, but you see that blood that was from this. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good call. It's just, uh, it was, I mean, it was an incredible classic. I mean, start to finish um, an incredible host community, so many great stories, but dude, you're the Bassmaster classic champion. How does like, is that even close to sunk in? It can't. No. And I mean, like, like, you look at uh, look at the names on there, man. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's sick. Edo Hibden, Larry Nixon, you know, Rick Klon a bunch of times, obviously KVD a bunch of times, Denny Brower, Dion Hibden. So the Hibdens both have been up to, they both fished the KBI, I yeah. think the very first year that I did, like back in 93, and they got second. And, uh, I've ran into Dion, you know, a number of times over the years and, 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 uh, you know, the first few times I told him, yeah, dude, I, I live up in Kenora and at Lake of the woods. And he always would tell me like, that was the most, that was my, the best fishing trip my dad and I ever did together, uh, going up there. And he's, you know, we caught so many smallmouths and, um, but like, I, I've, I've followed this stuff. I mean, since I was a little, literally a little kid, like I have old v VHS tapes. Like I used to tape all the Bassmaster shows on and uh, they were on TNN. Like we yeah. got TNN in Canada. Um, and 
so I, I am a super fan and um, it did, it, it, it's yeah. Like we looked like, so uh, Brian Gustafson, my, my good friend and uh, his, his girlfriend or fiance Bree and Shelby and I all drove home together. And it was so awesome. Like they helped us for this it was a long drive and I was pretty tired. Shelves was tired. We were all tired, but yeah. um, we all just kept sh- switching out yesterday and um, we, we made it home, but like, uh it, it, that was huge that they did that with us but we would look at that we looked at the trophy like i don't know how many times and um it just was like you just giggle like it's, i can't believe it yeah I, I mean it's stupid when i asked you like has it sunk in i'm like it hasn't even sunk into me and i just announced it but like that exact giggle um i told you that in a text but like the, so after it's all done um me and Brian are going to the bar to get a drink. You're not back at the hotel yet. And both of us like just repeatedly and it went on all night. We just like look at each other and have like this childlike giggle, like, holy crap, because, but I think it made it more special just because it was hell you went through. Like I, I said on live the day before, I'm like, I believe Jeff Gustafson's going to win the Bassmaster classic, but I do not believe he's going to walk away with it. He's going to be challenged. But what I thought is, Hey, your fish are going to be less. You're going to get 12, 13 pounds. You know what I mean? A small limit. And then somebody's going to get a 20 bag or 18, you know, threaten you that way. Yeah. But man, how torturous was day three of the Bassmaster Classic? Two fish all day. Uh, Yeah, it was rough. Um, And like, I knew it was going to be hard. Like I, it got harder. I, you know, you saw the first two days on paper, like the first day it was e- like, it went really easy. I was done pretty quick. The second day, it looked a lot easier than it actually was. And I, the thing was, it was, it's not like I had like 10 spots. I had two spots that were really good. And that's all but one of my fish came off those two spots. Um, and then I had a couple other places that had fish on them, but like, I, they were hard to catch. They were, I, they, they mostly weren't 18 inches. You know, I caught quite a few 17 and a half, plus, like real nice fish that they had to be 18 inches to keep. And uh, so I knew that that was going to be hard going into it. And then, it, you know, in the morning I got to the, to the takeoff early and got to enjoy a lot of like, that was just like one of the most amazing spectacles ever. Like there was Canadian flags everywhere there was Canadian flags hanging off the bridges. I saw them. Yeah. And, uh, so that, like, I was pretty cranked up, you know, leaving for takeoff and, you know, had a, had a good boat ride down the lake and all the boys were going by me and just, you know, like giving me the thumbs up and, and, uh, and wow. got to, got to where I sort of started and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going fast. Like I want to just, okay, where am I going to run into these things? And then, you know, telling myself, like, don't go too fast here. Just, just do your, do your thing. And, uh, and then, you know, it was, didn't get the start that I wanted. And then that man, I mean, anyone that fishes tournaments knows when it isn't going your way. Like the first day, it felt like the longest day ever. Like I had my fish pretty early and, um, you know, I didn't want to go and catch them off any places where I knew I could catch one. So I'm looking for new, I mean, it was kind of a boring rest of the day and it just seemed to like, it was three o'clock, like just took forever to get there. And, um, but man, when you're not catching them, it's like time just goes like double fast and all of a sudden it's nine 30 and then all of a sudden it's 1130 and okay, I'm at the halfway point and I have not done my job yet. And I knew like, as the day went on, like the morning's important too, like they're easier to catch sort of first thing in the morning and uh anyway uh it it wasn't like like I had a lot of thoughts going through my head like what can I do different here and it wasn't like I had a good backup plan like I did not go there in largemouth fish I just I went there and where am I going to find smallmouths to win the tournament with and um like luckily last time I kind of got to taste like what what really exists there if you find it and so that's my you know for this tournament, if it was a regular elite event, I probably wouldn't have fished it the same way. And it's, it's easy to say that, like, it's kind of a cliche thing to say, you go to the classic to try and win it. But I really, you know, I felt like I had a better chance to even to just to catch a big smallmouth than I did to catch largemouth. And, uh, 
So that's what I did. And, and on the third day, like as tough as it was, I don't think I went for more than like a 10 minute period throughout the day where I wasn't working on a fish. I mean, there was, there was still fish on a lot of these places and just hard to catch. I think a combination of the pressure, like I'd been fishing these spots fairly hard. Um, and then the weather, it was flat, flat, calm and bright. Um, and then there was a lot of boats around. Um, and I, you know, I think that just even though they, they, you know, people weren't getting super close or anything, but it was just a lot of boat wakes when I would pull up to the spots and I'm sure everybody's got sonar going on. And I don't know if that had a worse effect than, than maybe we thought, but, but they were very hard to catch. And, um, but thankfully like, and then, you know, the ride back, I did not think I have a, had a chance. I really didn't. And, uh, and then, yeah, when I got back in, Brian, Brian told me that, uh, dude, you have a chance, probably the best chance. And, uh, you know, I think you might've got the job done. And, and then, you know, I, it's like, wow, have this, and it, it was a couple hours before I actually got to the arena from the time I checked in. And, at, you know, that was, that was, that was rough too. Like I'm in the boat yard, just sort of sitting in the boat by myself, like just like, you know, I can't believe I didn't just make this seal this up. I had this great opportunity and then, um, you know, pretty stressful. Um, and then Swindle came over and talked to me for like 10 minutes and literally had me laughing for 10 minutes. And that was, uh, you know, gave me a big hug and, uh, that, you know, he just has a way of, uh, he's a special dude too. Like you, you, yeah. everyone gets to see him put on a show when he's on stage and everything, but like in real life, he, uh, he's a sharp guy and just always says the right things. And, um, you know, that, that was a cool moment too. I wish he, I know his camera guy got some of it on video, so I'm sure he'll have some of that to share with everybody, but I wish, uh, you know, I hope people get to see some of that. It was pretty neat. Yeah. He's, um, he's a really funny dude and everything, but he, I mean, he's a giant heart. Yeah. It's, it, and, and I think people are starting to see that more and more with him, but, um, in some ways i hope they got some of that but in some ways i also i'm a yeah. weirdo that way like in some ways i'm like there's some stuff that people just don't need to see you know what i mean like it's just yeah. cool like um I, I don't know and it's not wrong to show it or whatever but it's just you're right he's a special dude um when i went backstage after we weighed 19 and the super six was waiting there um as i always do you know like i've we've got the intro and everything me and you like looked at each other and it was like the weird, like I said to Sarah afterwards, I'm like, there could have been like a photo gallery just of our facial expressions through the whole thing. Cause like, I mean, I don't know how it's going to work out, but what were you thinking when you were back there? <laughs> we, we looked at each other. What, what were you thinking? Uh, I was like, Mercer's probably freaking really happy right now because it's going to be an exciting finish. It's going to be much closer than I wanted it to be today. And uh, he's, you know, but uh yeah no it was scary i i knew it was going to be pretty close and uh they didn't really let like canterbury and schmidt and i really mingle too much they kind of cut us apart and uh you know like i have a lot of respect for those guys we all fished the flw tour together and we've all known each other for a long time and they uh i have respect for all these guys that we fish against but those guys are you know they've always been really good to me and never had any issues with either of them and just um Brian called me on Monday, the day after, and I'll, we'll talk about that here in a bit, but just a really nice call. But anyway, we never really got to talk and, you know, obviously like I looked at Bass Track and saw where, what the, you know, but then like, th that's, that's, you know, you just never know how that, it, how accurate that is. And I knew like I had a little bit more than six pounds, but yeah. not much. Like I didn't have a lot to play with. I only had two fish. And uh, so yeah, it was, it was stressful. Um, and then, um, I just sat, I, and I, then it was more alone time in my boat while, I, you know, the, the five guys ahead of me went through the arena and I could hear what was going on. And, um, when I heard, uh, Canterbury's weight, I, I knew I don't, I knew I was going to be like just over 42 pounds. So, uh, when I heard Canterbury's weight, I'm like, okay, I dodged one. And then when I heard Schmidt weigh, uh, and I talked to Cox a bit and he just, you know, he was just like hugging me and like, you're going to do it, buddy. <laughs> you know, but, uh, 
when I heard Schmidt way and I, you know, I was like, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to win. And uh, yeah, it was. And then like, just when I got came into the arena, it was like probably the biggest wow moment of my life. I mean, it was so loud and like um, just crazy moment, man. It was uh, that's, I, I just like wish everyone could get to experience that once it was, it was, that's why we do it. And uh, again, like kind of cliche to say, but that was, that was like, you know, probably one of the best moments I'll ever have in my life. Like before yeah. we got to the scale, you know, like just that, like, like people were going nuts. There's Canada flags everywhere in the arena. And just, it was, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Like just, I can't believe how many people showed up down there on Sunday for, for the final way in and, and uh, just to, you know, it was pretty neat. Yeah. And I didn't know if you got a chance to really absorb it. Cause there's so much, I mean, you're really not on the stage that long that, you know, no. but I'm standing up there for the entire thing, but I'll be honest. I was blown away by the number of Canadian flags. Like, you know, they, there's, I, I mean, foolishly, I figured I knew all the Canadians that were there um, living up to stereotypes that we all think every, every American thinks, you know, every Canadian, but I, I thought, you know, I've run into most of them, but I'm like, there's Canadians all over the place, not like just the ones up front and stuff like that. There was, it was shocking how many Canadian flags there was in the crowd. And um, it, it was, it was wild, dude. I mean, it was. Uh, but that yeah. moment backstage, like we made eye contact a few times and I think I was just kind of like shaking my head at you. Like, I can't believe I'm, I didn't just make this a done deal. This yeah. afternoon, you know, um, that was kind of the, and and then also like the unreal like I can't believe that I'm in the Super Six I can't believe this is happening and they and they like the Bassmaster production people like they put these all those awesome videos together you know to get everyone all cranked up and I'm kind of I'm kind of trying because there was a little screen back there where we could see that so I was kind of trying to pay attention to that and like not start crying and just like it was a lot man it was a lot of that's my whole life right there just like you know um that it, a lot of my life went towards that moment right there yeah it, it uh it was an amazing moment and um and i think that it, you know as painful as it was i said it to your parents and i, I all day all i thought about was shelby and your parents i'm like how horrible like it's horrible to go through that as an angler but you're focused on catching a fish like you said there wasn't 10 minutes but i just yeah. kept thinking of, of them pacing and you know because yeah um but I think I explained it to your parents. I'm like, I, I, I've never had a child, but I hear it's probably like childbirth. You know, it was painful to go through, but once you're done it, it's, it was the right thing. It was the best thing that happened to you. Like, I think if you yeah. go and weigh 15 pounds, you're still classic champion. We're still talking today. It's still exciting, but it isn't that emotional roller coaster. Yeah. That pays off with the world's biggest party. Yeah, no. And I've said it a couple of times. Like I don't, uh, looking back now and like later in life looking back it's going to be a way better story and a better memory the way it worked out and and it's a hard place to fish it's not the yeah. easiest place that we get to fish and uh you know i had a, I had a good run there with catching these small malts for for you know a number of days but uh i knew that it was it was it was i was playing roulette kind of just the way that i was fishing and um i knew that one of these days it wasn't gonna just go so good um, but it was, it was, it was hard for everybody. And, you know, I, I saw a few comments online, like people just, you know, it's always like the person whose real name isn't on the doing the <laughs> chirping, but like, just, you know, come on Bassmaster. Like we need to have the classic at a better place. And, but like the fishing part of it, the, the size of the fish and the number of, I mean, that's just all relative. It doesn't really matter. Um, it was exciting the way that, and I mean, obviously a lot of people watched and were interested and it worked, it was exciting the way that it was, but yeah, um, you know, so it was, it was a hard place to fish and it was cool. Like guys, everybody in the top 10 kind of caught them a different way. And, um, it was, it was just, a it was a challenge. It wasn't, it wasn't just an easy, like, you know, and that's the reality of it for most people. Like when you go bass fishing there's some people live in these amazing, you know, there, there's an amazing lake right outside their door and they can go catch 50 bass every time they go. But like for the most people, um, especially in the, you know, central United States, it's not, 
necessarily like that easy to go when you go out every day. So I think people relate to that. Yeah. It, um, I, I think it's a great host city. I mean, to, to me, yeah, it, absolutely. it's incredible. Like, because I think it's easy to sit at home and be like, well, they should have gone to somewhere with better fishing. Number one. I mean, it's conditional. I mean, it's fishing. It's, it's, it would have been a totally different tournament if it was a week earlier, what totally different tournament yeah. was a week later. Yeah. But the classic's so much bigger than that. If you're there, you realize like, I didn't hear one person that was there say anything like that because they're just excited that they can go to takeoff with it. 6,500 yeah. people at takeoff. They can go to, it's all within five minutes of each other. And realistically it's walking distance. So I think it was a huge, a huge event. Are you shocked that, Regardless of the victories, are you shocked that you, I mean, you've won an elite and a Bassmaster Classic on the exact same body of water and still nobody has been able to crack that nut? You know what I mean? There was a few anglers that did that during the event and caught a few fish, but nobody has been able to figure it out like you. Yeah, I don't think anyone else has had a limit of smallmouths um, <laughs> in either event. So it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Like, um and like the lot in 2021 I, I had probably the worst practice that i've ever had for a tournament and i found those i found these small malts in the last hours um and literally like i knew the fishing was so going to be so tough that if i i'm like I, maybe i'll catch two keepers tomorrow and i'll survive this thing and not finish in a hundredth and i pulled up there and it, there was way more fish there than I thought there was going to be. And it was, it, you know, the re, you know, everyone saw what happened. It was, it was incredible. Um, and then, you know, to, I think that served me well the, coming back for this one, just because I knew what existed there with the small malts and that just made me that that's what I'm going to do the entire time. And, um, you know, it, it, uh, I think, they just weren't that they, they weren't everywhere and it was hard. And I think, cause I mean, everyone in the field just about went down to that area and looked around at least had a, you know, checked it out. And it, it, uh, the, the places that I ended up fishing in the tournament, I mean, I never saw another boat around at all. Really. I had, I had, to be honest, I had, I asked a lot of people that like, did you check this before tournament even started? And there was 10 to 15 people that like straight up said, no, it's wrong to yeah. check it. It's, it's yeah. gussy stuff. Where are you on that? Like what going into the tournament before, you know, um, it's, a, well, it's a weird, it's a it weird conundrum a weird, to figure out. Right. Yeah. It was really weird because like, I like these guys are never going to have a problem with me fishing other people's stuff or like, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to pull up next to anyone if they're fishing a spot, unless it's like someone I know and I ask and get the green light or, you know, like sometimes that stuff happens, but, um, but for the most part, like I'm pretty old school on, you know, if I don't want it done to me, I'm not going to do it to somebody else. And uh, the first day of practice when we got there, obviously I went to the canal where I caught them last time, checked it out. Well, there's fish everywhere in there. Like it's, but they're hard to catch now, but like there probably is more fish in there than there was in 2021. So immediately I'm like, okay, I'm going to just fish here the whole time. I'm going to spend my whole practice around here and just like figure, learn it better than everyone else. And this is what I'm going to do. And I, I mean, you go dabble out into Teleco or Loudon a little bit. And like, like I say, it's just not that easy. You go drive over a couple points and uh, I can't, they're, all the fish are just right there. They're not out there. No, there's nowhere else that has them. And then day two of practice, there was a bunch of, a bunch of our guys were in there. And then there was a local tournament going on. Like the boat ramp was packed. There had to be a hundred boats. Well, a lot of them were fishing in that canal and catching them. And like, um, at that point I realized I'm, no one's going to win the classic in this canal. It's just too, it's getting too much pressure. Um, it's, it's not going to happen right here. And the third day of practice, that's when I just sort of went, it went into Teleco and just started looking and looking and looking at about one o'clock. I found the first of the two like good schools that I found. And I was, I had been idling around for a while and I just went by this sort of, it was a, it was actually just a chunk of like river ledge where what, what ended up being my best spot. And I had my three, my side imaging on and I just saw a little bit of rock 
And what I learned, had learned from the canal was like there, all the fish in the canal were around where the rocks were. Like if it was just a flat bottom, like there'd be no fish, but like when you got along around those rocks, they would just hide behind them, hide in the cracks. Um, you would never see them on your console sonar. You would just see, but when you put a bait down there, well, here they come. And uh, so I saw this bit of rock out there. So I, I, and I hadn't stood up for a while. I like needed to get up and move a little bit. I go up to the front, I turn around, go up to the front, throw the trolling motor in, drop my jig down. And I mean, it was, I think it was like 30 feet of water and my, my bait gets to like 20 feet and like, it's like the whole bottom just starts moving up and I'm like, oh God. And there's stripers and white bass and crappies out there. So, you know, but I knew, and here we go. Boom. I, I, like I stopped my bait at 20 feet. Boom. And I catch a 17 and a half incher. Okay. They're bass. Drop it back down. Like it, it doesn't get like 10 feet down. They're all right up at the boat. I catch a four pounder, like, oh boy. And uh, I move around on this, like there was about 20, 30 yards of it. And I get to the end of this little sort of vein of rock and I drop it down again. Same thing, just a big giant school of them. And I was like, holy man, if these things stay here, uh, this is this is very good. And then I went another, I don't know, maybe at around 4.30, like several hours later, I, I was idling over another point, sort of the same thing. Like just saw something that looked a little bit interesting, went and put a bait down there and oh, here they come, you know, four pounder. And I, re I remember reeling that one up and uh, uh, there was like another, like, a, like maybe a five pounder, like a huge one. And this is in like 30 feet of water. Come, I reel this one up and it gets to the trolling motor and this other big one is just like comes up with it it's just sitting right there like watching what's going on like where's mine <laughs> like anyone could have dropped anything in there and it would have bit and uh and then so Wednesday I just went back I drove all the way down there again and looked and looked and looked for the entire practice day and never found another like I found a couple places where I caught a fish here a little you know like oh there's a couple right here a couple there but not like those two spots had a big school of like biters and there was some big ones and uh that was you know all I all I needed I, I wish I would have had a third like good school that I could have um and it probably would have made things easier on Sunday and then you know, a lot of things collided to kind of go my way because I, uh, if the tournament would have been, a, you know, another two or three days later, they might have all been gone. Like there was less of them as the, you know, the event kind of went on. And it was cold last weekend when we got there yeah. and started practicing. Like, I mean, I, on Sunday, the day I found them, I had ice on my rod guides until like 11 in the morning. Like it was cold. And, you know, if the tournament would have, but at the, on the other side of it, if the tournament would have been the weekend before, I mean, oh. I would have been done in 10 or 15 minutes every day like that's how easy it was but you so, might have had more people catching them in there because there was more yeah. fish you know yeah. so it yeah it's just it's a crazy sport and when you win how just like the littlest things go your way and if it if it, if they did it it you know you could have landed in 45th place and you don't get to talk to anybody what was it um in some ways you know, everybody talks about forward facing sonar, but when you won the first time there, you didn't have forward facing sonar, correct? Right. No, so I was didn't. it, was, did forward facing sonar make it easier this time or you've won in that area both ways? So, um, when I found him in practice, I, you, you know, you probably didn't really need it. I could have done what I wanted to do with like with traditional 2d, but yeah. what happened when the tournament actually started was the fish started to like, they smartened up really quick once you caught a few of them. And, um, cause I want the way that I was fishing, like I want, want to go and get right on top of them, drop my bait down. Oh, hang on. You're a little busy. Yeah. I got my ringers off, but for some reason the phone's connected to my computer. So it rang on there, but, no um, but like, um, what would happen is I, I, I would get on top of them and they would be harder to catch. So the, I ended up catching a lot of my fish by pointing the mega live around. And like, I could see where the, you wouldn't, yeah, I'd see the fish sometimes, especially like once I lifted them and they were, you know, sort of, they'd be all over in the water column. But, um, but like I, I'd, I'd pitch the bait out and I'd reel it over top of like these where I thought the fish were. And, and, um, I couldn't have done that without having mega live on there because 
you wouldn't know exactly where your bait is in the water column. You're guessing. Um, you wouldn't know, like I could like, okay, here they come, here they come. And then I could just kind of like, you know, do what I needed to do with the bait. And luckily I was able to trick enough of them. Yeah. This is the most fishing we've ever talked on this podcast, to be honest. Um, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just out of control. Uh, people are not, no, 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 it's great info, but I just got a text from one of your buddies uh, while we're here. So talk about it. Big buff just texted me. Um, and I mean, how awesome was it? Like I said to me, he's like, where I'm like, where'd you come from? He's like Florida. And I'm like, Oh, do you have a place in Florida? He's like, no, I was with my family on vacation. I left them at the science center. They were at the science center. When he realized there was a shot you'd win, he literally left them, went to the airport, got a ticket and big buff. For those of you who don't know is Dustin Bufflin, Stanley cup champion, former NHL superstar and all around good guy. How cool yeah. was that to, you know, dude. to have a dude dr drop everything and head there and not just him, Jamie Bruce, your, your brother, like a lot of people just yeah, a lot showed of people up. just kind of drop drops, whatever. And, and showed up. Um, and I, like, I had another friend from home here, Jaden Simons, uh, him and his wife, they have a new baby and I'm in the champions toast on Sunday night. And like, I'm so glad somebody, cause I didn't know they came. I turn around and like, here's this, my friend and his wife from Kenora are just like standing there. And I had wow. no idea. Like it was, uh, but yeah, big buff, um, literally went to the airport in sandals, shorts, and a t-shirt and just hopped on a plane for Knoxville. And like the boys were looking for hoodies for him and you know like just and he's yeah. a big man so guess like, who they called <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so but he just that's the kind of guy he is i mean he just is he's like one of the easiest people i've ever been like to be around all the time i mean he's just life's good he's in a good mood and he uh you know he he had a had an amazing hockey career and that's a very you know it's consuming if you're any kind of pro athlete and uh he's done now and he's his life is all about his kids and his wife and um he his he he gets away to go fishing you know here and there and he loves to fish and that's how we kind of hit it off and uh became friends but yeah just a just a top-notch guy and um you know nobody uh if you didn't know who he was, I mean, he's just, it's very, he's very unassuming. And I guess uh, I didn't, I didn't get to witness this, but like Hackney is his favorite um, angler. So the other night in that, in the champions toast, I guess he was holding the trophy and uh, I guess Hackney came up to him and like, obviously didn't know who he was or anything. And was like, Hey, I think you should put that trophy down. <laughs> Uh, that amazes me that Hackney, but I mean, that just shows you how. Yeah, yeah it's like a, resp a respect <laughs> thing, I guess. So, yeah, I just that would have cracked me up. But, um, but yeah, like I got a, like, that was the other cool thing is like, I'm in that, in that champion's toast. And like, those guys are just freaking legends, like him and Christy and like all those guys. And then, um, like, I got a picture with Hackney and I, and he, 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 I, um, sent me a text yesterday and was like hey man you got that picture we got and I, I sent it to him and he posted it and like I just wrote on there like one of my top five favorite pictures from the night dude like you know you meet some of these guys and maybe they're not as cool as you when you're a fan but like he and like you've been around him a lot so funny like way yeah. funnier than you, you know like you, the perception is he's just all business and Christy's kind of the same way but like these guys are so funny and just so like funny. great great to be around but um but that was cool and then i'm like i'm getting you know standing with the trophy get getting pictures with everyone having a little chat with everybody and then freaking kvd walks in there and comes right over and i'm i'm like hey can i get a picture and like of course and he's we ended up talking for 15 or 20 minutes and like i i've met him a couple times and you know in passing but like i i'm sure he never like knew who i was or anything and um He's like, dude, when I heard Metallica was your jam, he's like, I knew you're my guy. <laughs> That's how the conversation started. And then just, you know, we got talking fishing and life and just uh, it was a it was a pretty, pretty awesome moment.
he bought yeah. me a, bought me a drink and i think he might have bought me another drink later it, it was it was it was uh just that was the that was the greatest part of the whole day was just that after um just getting to like have words with all these awesome people yeah it, it would before he went up to you it was funny because in file this under things i never thought i'd hear but i'm so glad i did i'm standing with kevin and we're talking about you obviously and you've got this giant lineup of people which i'll say dude and this is no shade on anybody else but i've never seen a night of, not a night of champions but the champions toast <laughs> where as many pros stood for as long to get pictures with somebody so that speaks volumes of you but we're sitting there and and kevin's and, and Kevin asked me to introduce him to you. Like, so I was actually, but then when you guys, so I was standing behind him when he was waiting there, but you guys saw each other. You started talking. I'm like, I'm out of here. And it was awesome. Oh, to yeah. see. I, had enough, like, I had enough drinks in me at that point when I saw KVD, like I, <laughs> no one had to introduce us. No, I, was, I was all over. Him. That was great though. It was, yeah. um, I mean, that's, that's that's what makes that night so special you know what i mean and what made it cool for me was just all the different people that i would run into like one thing about the people you've touched in your life dude they all have a special connection with you like that's what i felt like in the decompression room and everything when you were there like mm -hmm. you, everybody's got buddies that party with them when they win everybody has that but it, like it was the genuine like people so happy and then people wanted to tell me well i've I've known Jeff since this and this, you know, this story. And the, it's just, it was very, very cool. It was, um, it, it was just, I mean, it's, it's the, it's the freaking Bassmaster classic. It should be how, here's one thing that I think you'll tell me the truth <laughs> on and everybody else acts super cool and ask them, what does it feel like to hold like that moment when you're holding the trophy, are you, like what is going like I, I'm always like, are they thinking like I gotta turn and make sure I get poses or what are you just like freaking out? Or do yeah. you remember what you were thinking? Well, I've watched that moment for every, you know, every classic for many years. And yeah. uh, so I knew I knew uh what how you know, I kind of knew what to do and just but like yeah, it's <laughs> I remember like throw like yes lifting up i'm like it, it, this one's heavy too <laughs> uh, but no problem and then um like when they let all the confetti go uh this i think i told you this the other day but it was so like i was like so covered in it I, i'm like this and uh all of a sudden everything just went quiet and i was like did my did my ears just like did i just lose my hearing and there was so much conf I don't like I don't know if you were in that or not, but there was so much confetti yeah. and stuff around me. It literally just like deafened everything in there for a, a few seconds, and uh, and then I stepped back, and all of a sudden it was loud again. And okay, we're good. <laughs> I I, it, I don't even under because dude, I all I am I'm never win the classic. I just yell stuff when people do, <laughs> and I swear to you, I got off the stage and I said to Sarah, I said, "What did I say?" And she's like, what do you, and I'm, I, like, I didn't, I had to watch the video too. Like, I don't remember, I, I do now. Like I said, oh, Canada, you have an elite or a Bassmaster Classic champion and all sorts yeah, of other crap. I don't remember any, I mean, I, yeah, it, it's such a blur and it's so bright up there and like, it just, it's loud. And uh, yeah, I wish I could have um, taken that in a little bit more, but like, you know, you, you said it earlier, it all happens fast. And uh you know, obviously, like I haven't really got to watch the video back, but yesterday I did a, I did an interview with um, a sports uh, station in Winnipeg, and and actually one in Toronto too, and both of them played the like, thirty seconds from the time I was walked from my boat to the scale, and you called the weight, and um, and then um, one of the guys in Toronto, uh, they actually they they after that they played, hey, we got another clip. Let, let us know if you know who this is and it was they start playing this clip and it's never give up <laughs> and uh, i'm like oh yeah absolutely i know who that is and uh you know it was ike's uh winning winning fish catch and that's probably probably the most famous classic moment of all time i think and uh yeah uh, it was it was um it was pretty pretty neat but i haven't got to really watch it back yet we just you know, it's been a blur the last few days, but we got home late last night. So today I'm looking forward to kind of like 
getting to look through a lot of the photos and video and just like people have sent me a lot of awesome stuff and um yeah life-changing moment man it was uh it was it was I, I still like yeah i just can't really believe it happened what is it i mean you imagine it your whole life how different is it from your imagination or is it is it better actually i don't want to ask if it's better but what is different than you had imagined um i don't know the whole experience was was better like just uh, it, everyone just was made it so about me and like it was just so special like just the, like all the Bassmaster people and just everyone that was there like all the, a lot of the industry people like you know, the, all the Yamaha people came up and like hugged me and shook my hand and like, just like other, like, not just my sponsors, you know, like yeah. that was really, that was really cool. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, like just, just the, all the love was, was, that was like the most special part probably. And just, um, like after it was over, like, when my boat came out the other side of the arena, like all of a sudden all my friends are there, like they jumped the barriers and, but like they would, they just let everyone kind of come and be around. And um, it wasn't, you know, cause like earlier in the event, like they got to kind of run a tight ship cause there's yeah. lots of people that are there and they got to keep some kind of order. But, um, but yeah, everyone just like was, was so happy after like, I literally didn't have to drive much yesterday. I'm going to, like see where we're at here but I, I i i i put in probably five or six hours of driving but like the rest of the time i'm on my phone trying to do messages and like i don't know if you can see that or not but like i can't but somebody you know, probably can 391 texts still and 91 emails still um and i've like sort of went through and deleted all the garbage email like i just i just like it's it's i appreciate all the messages so much and i feel bad like i i know there's a lot of important ones on there that i want to get back to with, with people but yeah it's it's a good problem to have um but it just yeah it, it, it all the love's just been amazing yeah it, it that's that's what's so incredible about that victory it's like nothing else like it's not like winning angler year a lot of anglers would say is is more coveted because it's a whole season but nothing's like winning the classic. Like it's, it's, and I got some shade from Canadian dudes because they were like, we're going for a party. Come to the house. Like they had this big, awesome Canada house, which you ended up at. I was there yeah. for like three minutes. Um, yeah. It was too hot and I had to leave. It was, yeah. you know, here's where I learned. I ran into both Lee Livesey and Matt Robertson on the way there. And both of them said, yeah, it's too late. You should go back. If they tell you to go back, you should go back unless you win the classic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but I, like, and I said to them, I said, dude, he just won the classic. This is, this is bigger than that. Like it, it, you have to be at that um, evening. You know what I mean? Like, it's just such a huge, like the KVD moments, all those that like, it's, it's your crowning moment. You know what I mean? When the entire industry surrounds you. Um, and it, it was, it was freaking awesome dude i mean I, I loved every single bit of it um it's amazing where you've come from you know what i mean like i did a bunch of different interviews with media and they're like you know how long have you known jeff and i I told the story about your first seminar at the winnipeg poach show when yeah. you were scared to do a seminar you were like nervous and i'm like let's do it yeah. together um and to watch that dude win the Bassmaster classic is it's and, and never mind the fact that you're the first Canadian. Like, has any of that, like, not first, the only Canadian to ever win a Bassmaster Classic? Like, do you think about that? But like, that'll um, never change. Yeah, like that part. I I mean, like that's awesome. But I just like I know how many people love bass fishing up here, and how many good anglers there are. And a lot are never going to have the opportunity that I've had to get to go and do it. Um, but, uh, you know, that being said, like with Chris and Corey, like we've all kind of grown up together and those guys are, are so good. Like I, yeah. you know, I, I, they beat me a lot more than, than I get to beat them. And, and, and some of that, I mean, they get to fish close to home a lot and fish and that's not, you know, I don't mean that in any kind of, I just mean like they're, for me, they're hard to beat. Like, I just, I kind of feel like I, I sort of play on the fishing skills. I'm, I'm, you know, not as good as those guys all around. And, uh, um, 
you know, so it's, it's good. I love getting when I do get to beat them and we're competitive with each other. We love each other, but like, uh, it, I love get when I get to beat them and I can't wait to like, listen to you, tell them that I'm the boss for the next little while. And, uh, yeah, but they're going to win a lot of tournaments and a lot of titles, you know, in the near future. I mean, they're in their prime and, uh, they're the real deal. Like it's, it, they're, they're really scary. Good. What, one of the coolest things and I, and I, of the whole classic, and I actually wrote it down cause I wanted to get it right was your quote. If no one takes kids fishing, they're never going to go. So take your kids fishing, your neighbor's kids, your buddy's kids dreams can come true. I mean, to me, and I know you never wrote that down, thought it well, out. I don't know but- how I got that to come out so good, but, <laughs> but I, 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 uh, you know, just the, the, the path that my life's taken and shelves, like, I don't know if we'll have kids or not. And it's not the, it's a tough lifestyle for that. Like we're yeah. on the road all the time and it's a consuming, um, activity. And, but I mean, I, a lot of my friends have kids here and I just, I know how I was when I was a little kid. Like I love, I love this stuff. And, uh, you know, so I, yeah, you, 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 if nobody takes them, they are, they are never going to go. And it's, is as much as fishing's like a, a sport that anybody can do and, and participate in, it's still the, the, there is a bit of a barrier on like having a boat and having the equipment and, and learning how to go and, and, and fish and like treat fish properly and take care of them. And, um, and it's okay to eat some too, like just, but just the whole, you know, there's a, there's, you have, you, you have to teach them the, the right, right way to do things. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know that just, that was just something that I felt like, uh, was important and, you know, I, I think it's very important. And I think it's very, you dude, like you, you, you always act like, uh, you know, I don't know what, where that came from. Or I, I think you're just being you, you know what I mean? And that's also why people we're so excited to see this happen for you. That's also why, you know, it was such an amazing moment. And I think what's going to be most fun to watch is dude, you did the equivalent of when Mike Weir won the masters, you know what I mean? And from that moment on, there's been more competitive professional golfers from Canada, you know, basketball was affected by the Raptors winning the championship. Fishing's going to be affected by you. I mean, you made it real. And, uh, and I think it's going to be felt for generations to come. I mean, I think it's, pretty freaking incredible dude yeah no and it's uh for canadians to go down to the u.s and do and make it to the elite series it's hard it's a freaking hard road and uh you know chris and Corey and i kind of got lucky with the way we we got there um we caught a break but i mean but it's hard and uh but you can do it and i think we'll see you know coop coop's there now and and he's the real deal um yeah he's he's going to have a, a, a great career. Uh, he's off to a great start in the first couple tournaments on get way down south on water. That's like not in his wheelhouse necessarily. And, uh, but yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be more and you know, it's just, yeah, it, it's a, it's a big commitment. It's a project to go down and do it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, just, if you love it then, and you want to do it for a living, that's where you have to go. Uh, which is like every sport. It's funny because, you know, I'll always hear from people, well, when's the elite series going to come to Canada and this and that? Well, it's not how it works generally. You know what I mean? Like it'd be cool to have an elite series event in Canada one day. I I think Kenora just moved really high up the chance of it going there. I mean, uh, if you ask me, Mm -hmm. um, which would, how freaking awesome would that That be? That would be insane. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, and cause the community in Kenora, like, I can't believe the amount of texts and things I've gotten messages from people just because I mentioned Kenora during, you know what I mean? I said, you come from a small town in Northern Kenora and people, yeah. that's what makes that community so special. The people are just so incredible. Um, but you always have to travel to chase it. You know what I mean? Like it, it yeah. it's how it works, you know, and, and that's, what makes it special? Uh, I know you got a lot of stuff to do today, so I don't. I don't want to keep you too long, dude. But um, I got to do something before we are done. Kudos to you. But not a lot of people know what this is back here. This is from every classic that I've emceed. There's a different layer of confetti that was collected. 
So Super now cool. it's time to add your confetti. Super to cool. All of them. Super high tech Ziploc bag here. Shanna uh, got some for Shelby too. So that was that. That's pretty cool, dude. One of my biggest screw ups of the entire classic, by the way. I actually called Shelby Shanna the first time. Yeah, we laughed about it. It was, yeah, it was all good. So I know it's Shanna's fault because she was backstage and <laughs> screaming and everything. And I'm, I clearly know Shelby's name, but yeah. Sorry. No. So you are in there with all the last, whatever, 13 champions or whatever. And yeah. No, it's uh what's next? I'm going on an ice fishing adventure this weekend, a couple hours north of where I live. And I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull it off. I mean, obviously a lot of stuff to do here the next few days and it's, it's all, it's great. It's a great opportunity, but, uh, but I think I'm going to make it happen still. And, uh, you know, it'll be nice to kind of get away and uh, I'm going to Red Lake, Ontario, a couple of few hours north of where I live. And it's the most insane uh, giant pike and we'll catch some walleyes and lake trout probably too but like we're gonna catch these 40 to 45 inch 20 pound plus pike um like as many as we want and uh yeah it's gonna be fun be, be a nice get a little getaway yeah you took the elite series trophy out on the ice when you wanted are you bringing this bad boy out well we got home and like hardly any snow is melted like some years by the end of march like most of our snow will be gone but it's literally I could go out and be up to my waist in snow in my front yard and I could drive my 250 out on the lake still. Um, there's, th there's going to be tons of ice. Uh, so yeah, we're full winter. I'll probably have to take this beauty out on the ice um, at some point here in the next few days. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's where we live and um, you know, summers are beautiful. So that's, that's, that's the, the trade-off is we get, we get a full winter too, but uh but yeah, I, I just love fishing, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I like what I do love bass fishing the most and tournament fishing, but I, I get to, I live in a place where we have amazing fishing for a lot of other species as well. And I, I, I do sort of partake in all that, but, but yeah, home for a couple of weeks and then we're back at it again on the elite series. And I'm so excited. Like it's going to be so fun the rest of the year. Like I get to kind of fish for free. I'm in the classic next year and it's it's hard because like no matter how good you do every day is stressful on the pressure elite. like the guys are so good and it's so competitive um and and like we have fun but it's it's a lot of pressure i mean you never like i've never want to miss a classic and it's hard like you look at every year there's legends that guys that i think are so good that don't make it and uh i mean you look at the at the AOI standings after two tournaments, I mean, a lot, there's a lot of fish left. A lot's going to change, but there's like our past few winners are not inside the classic cut line right now. And like, that is probably the first time in years that, that they aren't in the top 10, you know, it's just, it's, it's uh, it's a, it's a tough group. So I can get, I get to fish the rest of the year without, um, you know, a lot of stress. And I think it'll, 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 it'll be good, you know? Yeah, it'll it'll be awesome. It'll be a celebration. It'll it it you've worked your ass off for it, dude. I know you act humble and but dude, you've taken so many risks in your life to be where you are. And everybody wants to be where you are today. It's real easy to be like, I'd like to be Gussie, the Bassmaster Classic champion. But they don't want to be Gussie eight years ago when you had a flat at the oh. side of the highway in the middle of nowhere. USA and at three yep. o'clock in the morning when it's teaming rain and you, yep. you don't know 200 bucks, get... 200 bucks in my bank account. And, uh, like, uh, boy, we're going to have to go to McDonald's this trip guys. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to get a steak for dinner and we're going to have to like, just keep it on this side of the lake. Cause I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have a $200 gas bill this weekend. And, you know, yeah, like I, I, I did go through all that. And that, like, I got lucky, so lucky that I got enough help early on when I started that I, I could go and do what I needed to do and, um, and, and get to go do it. Or I, you know, I may never have taken the, the risk. So, um, a lot, I mean, I wish we don't have time to mention every person that's helped me yeah. out. There's a lot and, uh, you know, that if, or I wouldn't be where I am today.
they know they know you know what i mean like the people that helped you didn't help you just so you could mention their name on a podcast they helped you because of the person that you are and uh you're an incredible person incredible champion and that that's what i was really proud of you know like i don't ever go to and i don't even know if you realized i was there but i never go to the press conferences or anything i actually was like at one point i'm like i better slow down or everybody else is going to hate me um because i did turn into a bit of a fanboy during that whole thing and um <laughs> but at that press conference all the media kept talking to me and they're just like he's going to be a great champion and it wasn't because you're Canadian it's because of the person that you are the Canadian thing is cool and it's a first but you're an incredible person an incredible champion and man uh, ultra deserving of this it uh so many stories that I mean I loved how Brucey drove through the night through the snow and <laughs> like it's just incredible dude like but it's it's not shocking because that's the person you are and um the rest of your life dude you're a bass master freaking classic champion last question what was the coolest call you got from somebody like some uh, blew you away that this person called you up? Um, I mean, it didn't blow me away, but uh, Al Linder. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just, legend. um, but yeah, he sent, he got a nice, nice message from him and, uh, just, yeah, that that's, that's as a, you know, as a fan and just as like, he's just a great person too. Um, and, and his, you know, their families really helped me out a lot. Um, to, to be here where I'm at today too. But yeah, probably, I mean, again, it's just like, there's a lot of, a lot of people. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but probably all under party this weekend. Well, I might, I'm supposed to do this ice fishing trip. So we might have to put oh, it off might be a party. for a few more days, but yeah, there's going to be a party. All right. I'm going to work Submit. on that plan today. Send me the details. Who knows? Maybe I can get a quick flight to Kenora in between tournaments. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gussie, thank you very much for for taking the time to do this. You know, um, sometimes these are a lot longer, but I, I don't. I know we'll have you back on again soon. Um, yeah, no, you're a great thanks. friend, a great person, and a great champion. And um, no, likewise, I'm so glad that it was you that I got to be, you know, really share that with in the in the moments that it happened. And you're great at what you do, so just uh, we all love you. Well. Thanks, man. Love you too, dude. There he is, your 2023 Bassmaster Classic Champion, the great Canadian Woo! Snow Leopard, <laughs> Jeff Gustafson. Thank you, dude. There you have it, Bassmaster Classic Champion, Jeff Gustafson. Whew, that is absolutely incredible. And um, he did something that many people thought could never, ever happen. Um, don't use never. Don't use never. It's a word that stays in the way of your dreams. And um, he did something that many thought would never happen. So I'm going to do something not that many thought would never happen, but something that we normally don't do. Bonus guest. I'm going to bring in Jamie Bruce from Kenora. He's one of Gussie's closest friends. Um, drove all night, like a Celine Dion song. I drove all night Ooh. to be with you. Um, he drove all night to be at the Bassmaster Classic to watch Gussie win. He hosts a badass podcast called Get the Net. And I just thought I'd have him on for a few minutes to talk about the party that was, the person that Gussie is, and the motivation that this has to give him as a Bassmaster Open EQ angler. So back to Kenora we go with Brucey. Brucey, thank you for doing this, dude. Um this isn't something we normally do, but I, I just, I really, I enjoyed hanging with you. I think you do a great podcast. And I, I wanted to talk to you about Gussie from your perspective as a guy who's watched him grow up, a friend, and also somebody who's trying to qualify for the Elite Series. I mean, not only was this weekend emotional and awesome for you, I imagine, but damn, it must be freaking pretty motivating. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks for having me on Dave. Uh, I know this isn't something you usually do and uh, yeah, pretty much just rode Gussie's coattails right onto this podcast as, as kind of I've been doing uh, the last few years in every other facet. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, there's, I am still trying to wrap my head around what, uh, what just happened. A, l a little bit of that is self-inflicted and, and then the drive back, but uh, yeah, I've talked to him a couple of times since and, and, man what a what a weekend <laughs> yeah. 
what is uh, i mean i've tried to explain how special kenora is i mean i've spent a little time there and it's just it's such a really cool community you know what i mean i think it's just because people choose to live there that value stuff other than being close to everything you know what i mean they value nature they value but but what does this mean to kenora do you think well i mean even even before this uh we, I mean, we have the weirdest little fishing community I've ever seen. Like people don't understand that live here because we're in it, but the best way I could describe it is the mystery Alaska of bass fishing. Um, we're, we're in central, Northern central Canada. We're in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, we have the biggest open team bass tournaments in North America. Like that's not a normal thing. We have, you know, the, the closest thing to the Bassmaster Classic are the Fort Francis Canadian Bass Championship and the KBI tent rides yeah. where it's, you know, music and, and boats coming through and massive crowds. And, uh, I mean, the competition's always just been so, so stout around there and we're so thankful to have someone like Gussie because he's such a hard worker. He's such a good angler and a nice guy that he just raises the bar. So, I mean, everyone has to, if you want to, if you want to compete around here, you have to rise up to his level and he just works harder and harder. And, you know, everyone, everyone just goes with him. So, I mean, he's, he's the, he's the rising tide. So, um, this is, you know, pe other people from, sorry, other people from, uh, from Kenora made the drive too, just cause he means, you know, he means so much to everyone. Um, and yeah, this is, this is going to have a huge impact, but like I said, even, even before this, he was already already raising the bar and and everyone was so proud of him already so when did you when did you start your trip what was it 22 hour drive is that what it took you guys or it was, was it? it was supposed to be 21 um we were watching him catch him that first morning because i like i wanted to be here so bad but i i you know i had a million things on the go i was just like this it, it's tried to be an adult yeah it, it didn't work <laughs> um so yeah I, as soon does. as i i talked to him after the first day of practice he told me they were still in the canal so i knew he had a chance uh, but that first morning when he lifted his trolling motor after fish five, I was like, we got to figure it out. And there were no flights or anything. Uh, so his brother, Ben called me and we we're like, all right, let's just go. So we got our affairs in order, hopped in the truck and we we're like, that will only take 21 hours. And you know, we had a big snowstorm and it ended up taking around 26. Um, we missed the day two way and we're sitting in traffic about an hour outside of Knoxville. And we hear Jeff get up there. And he name drops us on the classic yeah. stage, le leading the classic. I'm like, what? Like, who does that? <laughs> Gussie. <laughs> That's yeah. Who. Yeah. Gus. And now, yeah, I mean, so that was, yeah, unbelievable. What a, I, I said it a million times, but I would have drove twice as far. Yeah. The, the ride home must have been shit, though. I'll be honest. Like, the, you got the excitement of, you're still high, but you know what I mean? I, I'm, I, maybe it's not because, I mean, I still, you must have been excited, but you had to crash at some point, no? Uh, yeah, I mean, we were we were riding that uh, that rush for a while. Uh, Benny didn't do a great job on the way down driving. He actually pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he drove for a bit, pulled over at like whatever two in the morning. First snowflake had just hit the ground uh, near Madison. He pulls up beside an actual person selling drugs in a parking lot at a at a loves gas station at 2 a.m and uh and he pulls up right beside him and he's like you're driving so i hop i hop in the seat winter storm warnings start coming through this guy's asking me what i need because he pulled like deliberately pulled up right beside he just didn't notice this guy in this sketchy old vehicle so i was like i ah, nothing bud we're good um <laughs> but yeah drove battled through it but anyway benny he knew that uh that I got the brunt of it on the way back. So he shifted her out hard on the, on the way home. And yeah, I mean, we made it about 5.00 AM and, and we're ready for work on Tuesday morning. Nice. Nice. I, I found waking up the next morning, Monday morning, we got going early. Like we were on the road at like seven, uh, but it was tough to, to get going early. Um, that was a freaking <laughs> awesome party. What I mean, to me, the high, one of the biggest highlights and I listened to your podcast. I know it was huge for you too. that walk. Um, after the champions toast and, and when we made that walk to Canada house, it was, it was like from a freaking movie. Like it was, the streets were empty and it was just us and Ozzy screaming. And it, it, it was freaking like something from a movie. 
Yeah. I, I was trying to explain it to my friends on the way back and it was like, yeah, there was a mob. I mean, there must've been 80 people. Yeah. We had you in the mix, Australians in the mix, uh, just everyone you want around you. Um, and yeah, that favor chant was unbelievable. The, the Australians kicked it off. <laughs> I'm not even going to try it because my voice is gone, but yeah, it was, uh, I, I pray to God that someone got a video of that because it was incredible. That's something you just don't forget. Yeah. I, I said that to Sarah earlier. I was like, man, I, I don't think any of us pulled out like so weird that we live in a world where everybody videos everything, but like even just for Gussie to see it, because I don't think he, like he saw it from the front. And one mm -hmm. of the coolest moments was like, everybody's like, Gussie, 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 oi, 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 oi. we're oi. all just going down the street. And then at one point, such a Gussie move, he turns around and he's like, I love you guys. It was just the most <laughs> genuine, heartfelt, awesome moment. Um, what moments stand out from you, for you, for, from, from, you know, that flash of incredible excitement and everything? What, what, what are the big moments for you? Oh man. Um, the, the very first day I ever met Gussie, uh, was in the late two thousands. I walked into his little shack in Clearwater Bay and he had literally just finished watching KVD win. Wow. So it was the first, Brian Gustafson took me over to his house. We were just kids. We were 19 or whatever. And we were coming back from ice fishing. He's like, yeah, we got to stop in at Gussie's. And, and we wheeled in and he just looks up from his laptop. Like he's sitting there. He's like, yeah, KVD want another one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, seeing him after with like at the champions toast where KVD goes over to him and he's, you know, he's giving him words of encouragement and, and just looking over at that was like, yeah, that was, uh, that was an incredible thing to see. Like that was, that was the full circle. And then he's such a nice guy. Like he looks over at me and Brian, he's like, get in here, boys, like flags us over to KVD. I was like, this is yeah. Unbelievable. But that was, I mean, that was the biggest, the kind of biggest thing for me was to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I told Gussie right before. I was standing with Kevin and uh, Kevin said, Hey, you want to introduce me? And I, so I was like going up to introduce him, but Gussie, I mean, he says he was enough drinks into it that like, I, I, it was a cool moment because I just literally let it fly because I'm standing behind KVD and then Gussie sees him and he's like, you, I need a picture with you. <laughs> like, it, so there was no introduction needed. And, uh, it was cool to sit back and watch. Um, but I, I, I think what none of us will, it's going to affect fishing huge here. You know what I mean? Like it's got to make people, you see it all the time. Like when Mike Weir won the masters, there's been great Canadian golfers that came after it. I mean, he's, there's little kids that are what Gussie was at that moment. When you walked in on him, the first time you met him watching on a computer that were like, man, somebody from Kenora just did this. Why can't I, um, how yeah. motivated are you as an EQ angler? Oh, I just wanted to keep heading south after that. <laughs> it's, it was hard to come back up north. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just lit that fire even more. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, he's like without him doing this and, and being down there, it wouldn't even be on the radar. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be something anyone tried up here. Um, and, you know, you saw it with Cooper Gallant making the Elite Series too, like, there was a, a boost in Canadian signups last year. Um, yeah. I think Brian said it best. He's like, there's going to be 75 Canadians in the opens next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you're not one of them. Cause, cause dude, I'd love to have you on the elite series. It, uh, it was an incredible week, man. It's weird. I, I very few times, I mean, I'm always exhausted when I come home from the classic cause it's, it's a mind melting. It's the only thing business wise that I consistently underestimate you know what i mean right. and you just get in it and when you're doing it you're but man it um it was a freaking celebration speaking of celebrations you, is canora gonna have like a wicked party they're gonna have to um <laughs> i don't know the logistics of it yet um i guess he's going on an ice fishing trip on the weekend of all things so yeah it, it totally. probably probably won't be on the weekend <laughs> we all blew him off he's like hey boys we're going up to red lake pike fishing and everyone's just like yeah whatever probably not and now i'm sure he's gonna have 400 people go with him 
I'm, I'm we... heading down to Texas right after, so I'm going to miss it. So that's not the that's not the reason I jammed on it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a parade and and probably a party for the ages, even though a party's the last thing on everyone's mind right now. Anyone yeah. that was down there, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, it was uh, it was quite a party. Mine ended a lot earlier than you, you guys stayed. What what times you guys? I mean, I I I lasted like three minutes in Canada House. I went in there. Um, tried to get in that room that, that they rented the most wicked house ever. Like the unbelievable room, which was like a, what was it? A safe. I tried to get in there and it was like, just so hot. And there was kids with their shirts off. It was like freaking, <laughs> it was, it was like a, I didn't even know how to explain it. It was like, it, like, it was like an out of control high school party. Um, yeah. Except they're all guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all all, all bass fans. fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was unbelievable. Um, I mean, that kind of highlighted the, the Canadian fan base. I know there are a bunch of Cooper's buddies and, and uh, yeah, Moose has always been a good supporter and, and they fired that house up, but that, yeah, that, <laughs> that place was out of control, but we went, uh, we went over to the rooftop bar and uh at that point, Gussie had shut her down. Uh, Patterson uh, Leith from Sims was the voice of reason. He he was holding the trophy and was like making sure everything was you know on two wheels. So uh, Jeff went back and we we went over to the bar and watched Matt Robertson drink one more out of his shoe. <laughs> wow. um, yeah, yeah, and then uh, yeah, after that, I, my phone died, so I had no phone downtown Knoxville. Everyone had left. I was just standing there by myself, so I went back to the Canadian consulate, back to the <laughs> back to the Canada house, got charged up, and made her back around uh, around four thirty. So, wow, I'm surprised because Matt tried to tell me to go home. Like I ran into Matt on the way to that, and Lee Livesey, and I'm like, when Matt and Lee Livesey say it's time to go home. You should probably listen, but I guess Matt got charged up and went back out because because uh, he was trying to head home when I ran when we were doing that walk. Um, but yeah, no, it was a freaking awesome, awesome event, um, an awesome champion, and um, and you're a good dude, man. And I really, you know, so tell me about your podcast. Where can people uh, check it out and everything? And uh, hopefully, a, a couple of people come and watch it. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's uh, it's called Get the Net. It's on Jamie Bruce Fishing YouTube channel. It's on all the other platforms, Spotify, Apple, all that. So, um, yeah, thanks for thanks for plugging it. But it's like you and Gus here having a nice off. <laughs> what? No. A nice no, fight, Canadian nice fight. He would he would win. Trust me, trust me. There's <laughs> plenty that will agree. You'd throw um, some punches though. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. I I good people should help good people and i and i and i dude i really gussie had told me so much about you over like i really felt like it's weird when you meet people that you have heard so much about that you kind of feel like i knew you you know what i mean i'm like i ah, did we hang out before whatever but we got a chance to hang out and you're a good dude and um hopefully we can have you on here for a longer podcast at some point maybe you know in the future and get inside your head as this EQ thing goes on. But um, I, I just thought it was a great opportunity to, to learn a little bit more about Gussie, learn a bit, a bit more about the absolute disaster that the party was and um, learn a little more about you, but um, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. Let's start it now. Are they going to, Kenora needs to put a sign home of Bassmaster classic champion, Jeff Gustafson. I've never yeah. seen it done. Can we make it happen? Well, Mike Richards, um, has his own street, you know, mm -hmm. for, for all of his accomplishments in hockey. And I think Gussie needs his own boat launch. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boat launch, boat launch, welcome sign, whatever. I yeah. Mean, I'm going to go to home hardware, get some ready creep, head down and start making it. If, if it doesn't get a crew uh, <laughs> approved. So <laughs> it might not be the prettiest thing, but it'll be the Gussie launch. Yeah. And even with the sign coming in town, even if they won't do it, the town just, people paint up your own signs and start posting them around home of Bassmaster classic champion, because all I can do is looking at Kenora right now, man. And it's all of the world is looking at it. And it's because of, of a guy who is Kenora. You know what I mean? Like I, I was blown away. Like, well, the first time I came up to KBI, I was just blown away by just how that community is just so special. Like it's just really, And I think people that live there don't realize it, but it's, it's just a, amazing people. And Gussie is there. I mean, he's the, he's the, you know, he's the, everybody has a special Gussie story. You know what I mean? Like they all, yeah. cause he's that special. Um, and now he's a little 
extra special, but, um, yeah, that's he's, it, uh, dude. yeah, well, I appreciate it, Dave. Uh, thanks for plugging KBI. There's, there's been spots open the last few years. So if anyone wants, uh, anyone wants to start out where Gussie started, started out, go to KBI fishing, check it out. Um, it's the closest thing you can just sign up for and, and get in your own Bass Master Classic. Yeah, it's wild. It is. It, 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 I'll be honest. The first time I came there, I, I guess I was an arrogant dude that lives in Southern Ontario near Toronto. And, you know, we were fishing the big tour that we thought. And I went up there and I'm like, what the hell? This is some bull crap. This biggest tournaments, like the, the crowds, the community. It's it's pretty phenomenal. It, yeah. Um, well, KVD is retiring. You could probably twist his arm to come up here we'll save you a spot boys oh <laughs> damn that that's happening freaking awesome challenge him right now throw it out there kvd's scared to go right i'm not saying anything we're just going to shut this down baby <laughs> thanks for having me on bud i'll let you back to uh to the show i can't wait to listen to this thing all right well um that, thank you <laughs> <laughs> you I'm lost horrible. your words for a second. No, I'm horrible at editing that. these. I'm at, watch everyone. I'm horrible at editing them. I'm bad. It's, it's like it's the awkward part of the show. Um, it's all over. right. Well, I'll I'll pull the bandaid off. Thanks again for everything. Um, what an awesome show. Uh, man, can't wait to see you again at one of those, and we'll uh, we'll see you around soon. Jamie Bruce fishing. Get the nets. The podcast. Check it out. It's real. It's awesome, and it's very very cool. Appreciate it, bud. So there you have it, gang. From Bassmaster Classic champion Jeff Gustafson to one of his closest friends, Brucey. Um, check out his podcast, Get the Net, Jamie Bruce Fishing on YouTube. Um, a great dude, a real podcast, real conversations. And um, if we haven't learned, I'll put a link down below in comments and check your get yourself some smeltinator jig heads while you still can, because I believe they're becoming collectors editions. I'll try to put a link to them as well um, down in the comments below or in the, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Not good at this YouTube thing, really. Um, if we haven't learned that words like can't, never, impossible, those are all just words that we put in the way of dreams. Don't ever let words and people's opinions stand in front of your dreams because Jeff Gustafson just proved to the whole world you can make anything happen. And he did this week. Um, wow. Unbelievable. Hope you enjoyed the show. This weekend, I will be at um, Gagnon Sports. If you're from Southern Ontario, myself, Cooper Gallant, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, Bassmaster Open winner, we'll both be at Gagnon's, which is actually where I started. That was my first job in the fishing industry when I was 13 years old. Literally went in there, um, Roger Party, um, who has passed away since um, when I was 13 years old, walked in and said, I, I want to get a job here. And he said, so you want to work in a fishing store? And I said, no, I don't, I don't want to work in a fishing store. I, I just, I want to be a pro angler one day. And I think this is a great opportunity for me to meet some people from the industry. Evidently, he got a kick out of that and hired me. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm going to be back there this weekend on Saturday. Uh, it'll always be a good time hanging with uh, the whole party family and everybody that comes to Ganyon. So make sure you come there, hang out. And um, myself, Cooper Gallant, Elite Series Pro, and a whole bunch of Rampubas of fishing will be hanging out at Ganyon Sports this weekend in Oshawa, Ontario. Saturday from 11 till 2, I believe. Our hours around there somewhat. Um, look forward to seeing you guys. If you can't make it, just make sure to watch this every single week. Humpers are awesome. I thank all of you week after week. You make this show what it is. Without you guys, it's nothing. And you know how they all start and how they all end. Enjoy being and take it away, Bob Cobb. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?